to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about They Shall Not Grow Old. They Shall Not Grow Old is a 2018 documentary directed by Peter Jackson, which makes his first documentary in his filmography. It should be stated that he did make a faux documentary early on in his career called Forgotten Silver, so I suppose that doesn't really count. But this won't be his last, however, as he made another documentary series called The Beatles Get Back on Disney+. Plus. Despite that being Peter's recent, I shall not be reviewing that one for the time being. This will make my last film review of Peter's, and I'll probably say that this is my last Cinema Spotlight installment for a while. But we'll get more into that towards the end of my review after my rating. They Shall Not Grow Old is a line from a poem written by Lawrence Bignon called For the Fallen, first published in the Times on September 21st, 1914. The verses recited say, They shall grow not old, as that we are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Watching this documentary, it becomes an immersive experience to us as the audience as we listen to many different soldiers who served in World War I. The veterans recount their own experiences in their time, telling us various things they had to do, ranging from very basic stuff to nearly unspeakable matters. They all talk about their very first notion of war, to lying about their age, what they were given to get started, training, and the bitter taste of poor accommodation. Like, for example, they didn't bathe much, and they were only given one uniform. Combat itself was seen very differently from veteran to veteran, as some talk about being nervous, waiting for the enemy to strike, and others talk about not being afraid of dying, but more so losing a limb. Upon doing research of Peter's approach, he talks about how he wished to make an untraditional documentary where it wouldn't follow the norms of a normal documentary. Instead, we get the testimonies from the veterans unseen, but the voices of them are very much prominent, while hours and hours of war propaganda and war battles are shown on screen, making the flow of this documentary pretty considerable and unique for the watcher. The first 25 minutes of this film is black and white original film footage, actually starting off in a one aspect ratio and slowly crawling in, capturing the battalions, battles, and soldiers going about, and throughout the narration of the various veterans speaking, you get this idea and it's painting a pretty specific picture. Before you know it, you see the black and white footage change to color. Modern technology changes the original footage to give you more of an immersive experience and sound effects and voices are added for dramatic effect. But when a documentary comes out that's highly praised for its approach and style, I usually get curious on what it has to offer. When first watching this, I kind of expected the traditional approach where footage will be used, cutting to the veterans interviewed, but none of this really happens for the hour and 39 minute runtime. While I appreciated this approach and creative skill coming from Peter, and this is just my personal takeaway, I did find myself bored at points. If I knew what I was getting into, first and foremost, I could have my brain geared towards it, but unfortunately, I didn't know going in, so it was like, wait, is this gonna be the whole thing? Okay. Let me get my head wrapped around this. <laughs> but I can also imagine this project was very personal for him too, as I read that his grandfather fought in World War I, which this film is dedicated to him. And this is not to say the film is boring in the slightest. That's just my personal takeaway, and I think that's not really a great critique to give anyway. There are plenty of impressive techniques in here that mainly goes to the approach of the style of film to tell the story and its idea to be in a more of an immersive experience. The use of color accurately gives you the feeling of what these soldiers saw. Murky, destroyed wastelands, poor living conditions and treatment towards the soldiers. How the veterans explain their experiences are very objective as they recount it, but there's that level of emotion that makes it personal for them. I would go as far as to say that it's a memory piece, as it's a point in time where millions and millions of men put their life on the line, exposing themselves to hunger, disease, and military action. The ones who survive have a story to tell, and not one of them is too far off from one another. 
This is 120 men that survived and testify to their experiences from their perspective. They recount the joys, horrors, and quite literally the disinterested and dismissive economical issues of the time as they returned back home. With responses of society not understanding and very careless responses from civilians when getting a job was difficult or coming back to family and they didn't want to hear it. The family was mostly the harder part to listen to because they were so uninterested in hearing about their experiences. All in all, as a documentary and as a testimony and as a memory piece, this work is impressive. The storytelling is on point coming from these various veterans and the experience itself makes for a unique window to gaze through that makes it almost a rare treat to share with anyone who loves documentaries, particularly of war and real experiences. Despite this not being my thing, I can give credit where credit it's due. Imagery will get a bit grisly as flashes of wounded carnage and shocking editing techniques will enhance the experience, so I would definitely look out for that. The color grain is definitely faded and off, so you're feeling like if it was more colorful, maybe you would have a better time, but this is being more accurate than it would be trying to be too flashy. So instead of saying where I loved, liked, or hated it, I'll say I recommend They Shall Not Grow Old. It's on HBO Max currently at the time of recording this, and it's a 99-minute documentary that's worth your time. With all that said, thank you all so much for watching. If you have seen They Shall Not Grow Old, let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss another video. With all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Until next time. Okay, so to those of you still sticking around, I thank you for uh, taking an interest in wanting to know what's next in my future projects. For starters, I am announcing the end of Cinema Spotlight for the time being. This means a small break will be issued while I work on other things. Um, there's more than just, uh, you know, the reviews that I want to do. There's so much that I need to focus on, so I need to kind of clear my plate, and that way I can kind of come back into this with a fresh perspective. But it's just going to be for a month or two, um, nothing too huge, and it's not going to be a year, I promise. Uh, that's, that was unintended, but actually very much needed um, from last year, because I just burnt myself out when I was trying to do everything all at once. While I consider my next few directors on Cinema Spotlight, um, I'm going to return to TV shows for a while. Uh, that too means that I have to consider what I'm going to review next. Um, and that's going to be going with what I started with when I did that all those years ago. Um, that's old shows, stuff I never finished, and then also new ones, you know, and I think new is always better because then that gets more people to turn heads and go, okay, what does he have to say? But, you know, I still enjoy those old shows, my favorites that just did it for me when I was growing up. Um... But the biggest reason why I want to do all this is because of the new style in 7 Minutes or Less, the show that I've used this on. The style of my show has changed over the years since I started. I naturally approached the series of any show as individual talking points on how the good the show is, what plots may bring in with more characters, and the way I would talk about it. However, this was acting as if you were first coming in. So even at season five, I was like, you know, welcome everyone. We're going to talk about season five, but I just, I wouldn't say anything worth merit. It was so non-spoilerish and not really diving into what I think should have been spoken on because you're in the thick of it now. You're in the deep end of the season where you need to talk about this stuff. And I didn't. Uh, I decided that this doesn't work and has not worked for me. So depending on the show and how it's made up, I will be doing research on the structure, uh, whether it was made up as a whole season or broken into two parts. Uh, technicality aside, the deeper we get into the seasons, the more likely we're going to get into spoilers and talking points of the show. So... Um, I can talk about the choices made for characters, the turning points, deaths, and the quality of the storytelling and cinematography. Um, but here's a quick look at how 
I'm generally going to make up my reviews. And there's also a reason why you're hearing audio and not seeing me, because that's to kind of be a testimony towards what you're going to end up getting in seven minutes or less. You're not going to see me. It's just going to be me talking onto a microphone. First season will be a general review, and it's based on my personal feelings. And it'll be either recommending it or not recommending it. I'll talk about the pilot episode. There are no spoilers. I'm going to talk about the general plot, and then I'll vaguely get into where things start to change. Characters will be spoken about and tracked in character arcs, music and storytelling techniques as well. Second season, I recap the first season's events. So that definitely means spoilers. I'm not going to get so general anymore, but that's also where you're going to have to be careful. Obviously, if you haven't seen the first season, you're going to need to in order to understand what I'm talking about in the second season. But for those who really just want to know, hey, is it good? Is it great? Is it all right? What is it? I can keep my own little tiny rating system in the beginning saying, yes, season two, three, four, or five, whatever I'm covering is great, good, all right. It's got some issues. It gets better, but not so much, whatever. That's going to be like for your benefit of nothing more than just saying, Good, go watch it. Great, go watch it. I generalize the second season events where those who haven't caught up yet can still know how I felt about the season without spoilers. That's, But that's likely to come before the first recap. Third season, I recap season one and two's events. Now, as we dive deeper into this, season three is going to have minor spoilers involved. I give general nods to those who wish to hear the basics but don't want to have spoilers, like I said. Um, but then it's all normal from there. Like I'll get on the minor stuff and then just generalize and leave it at that. But fourth season and onwards, spoilers abound. Talking points covered include the changes in storytelling, if any, if there's anything more to note, things that I will have to say just to kind of keep things in perspective. Because at this point, it's going to be interesting to keep it at a seven minutes or less basis. So I've allowed myself to at least have an extended review on some of these seasons by the time I get to four or five, six or seven. Seven minutes or less was something that I started with and what I've always wanted to come back to and really make that the fine meaning of what my channel was really all about. Um, but I got to tell you, I am not rushing to get my next video out. So... If it takes me two weeks to get through one season of something that was only 13 episodes long, just know that I'm slowly digesting it. I'm trying to appreciate what these seasons are trying to bring. I'm not going to try and pop them out as quickly as I can. It's savoring and enjoying season by season play and if you get the next one it means that i finished and i had enough time to get my thoughts and feelings out in an appropriate manner but with all that said i hope you all are with me on this journey stay tuned for my first episode of seven minutes or less of whatever show i may choose i hope you all are doing well and thank you all so much for your support when i returned and i will see you again in the future